the most brutal king in the Bible. He executed the former king and his people. Hazael was anointed to be king of Syria by Elijah at the specific command of the Lord. 1 Kings 19, 15, Amplified Bible. The Lord said to him, Go, return on your way to the wilderness of Damascus, and when you arrive, you shall anoint Hazael as king over Aram, Syria. Together, Hazael and Jehu were to serve as the instruments of judgment that God chose to use against Israel and the family of King Ahab, who had been so idolatrous and wicked throughout their reign. Hazael served as an official in the government under King Ben-Hadad. Ben-Hadad fell ill one day, and so he dispatched Hazael to meet the prophet Elisha, who was traveling to Damascus at the time. Elisha wept as he told Hazael that Ben-Hadad would die, but that Hazael would live. 2 Kings 8, 8-15, Amplified Bible And the king said to Hazael, Take a gift with you, and go to meet the man of God, and inquire of the Lord by him, saying, Will I recover from this illness? So Hazael went to meet Elisha, and took a gift with him of every good thing of Damascus, forty camels loads. And he came and stood before him, and said, Your son, Ben-Hadad, king of Aram, has sent me to you, asking, Will I recover from this illness? And Elisha said to him, Go, say to him, You will certainly recover. But the Lord has shown me that he will certainly die. Elisha stared steadily at Hazael until he was embarrassed, and then the man of God wept. Hazael said, Why are you weeping, my lord? He answered, Because I know the evil that you will do to the sons, descendants of Israel. You will set their strongholds on fire, kill their young men with the sword, smash their children to pieces, and rip up their pregnant women. Then Hazael said, Surely not, for what is your servant, who is nothing more than a dog, that he would do this monstrous thing? And Elisha answered, The Lord has shown me that you will be king over Aram. Then Hazael departed from Elisha and came to his master, who said to him, What did Elisha say to you? And he answered, He told me you would certainly recover. But the next day Hazael took the bedspread and dipped it in water and covered the king's face, so that he died. And Hazael became king in his place. 2 Kings 8, 15, Amplified Bible But the next day Hazael took the bedspread and dipped it in water and covered the king's face so that he died and Hazael became king in his place. The king certainly did recover, or would have, had not the wicked Hazael committed murder. By drawing an evil conclusion from Elisha's prophecy, Hazael was able to seize control of the kingdom and rule it to his own advantage. He gave in to the evil in his heart rather than using the announcement of the prophet as a wake-up call to investigate the evil within himself. As a result, he bears full responsibility for the actions he took as a direct result of his own free will. It may be asked if Elisha should have told Hazael this. Perhaps he set in motion a self-fulfilling prophecy and actually inspired the assassination of the king of Syria. However, there are many reasons for thinking that Elisha did exactly the right thing when he said this to Hazael. Elisha did not reveal how the king would pass away to Hazael. He did not reveal that he would be assassinated. Elisha did not tell Hazael how he would become Syria's next king, nor did he tell him to assassinate the king. Elisha went against his own compassionate and patriotic interests in telling Hazael this, making it more likely that he did it 
at God's prompting. Elisha perhaps hoped that this amazing prophecy would touch Hazael's heart and turn him away from the evil he would later commit against Israel. As it turned out, God knew the actions of Hazael, but he did not make Hazael do it. It was absolutely foretold that Hazael would be king of Syria. The prophet knew the fact right well, and he clearly described the means, else why should he look into Hazael's face and weep? God foreknew the mischief that he would do when he came to the throne. Yet that foreknowledge did not in the least degree interfere with his free agency. Spurgeon Shortly after Hazael came to power, Joram, son of Ahab and Ahaziah of Judah, formed an alliance in order to fight against Hazael, and they travelled to do so. Joram, son of Ahab, ruled over the Israelite kingdom in the north, and Joram was just as corrupt as his father. His father was undoubtedly not the best role model for him. Ahab had led the people astray into the practice of idolatry, directing them away from the genuine God of their forefathers and toward the worship of Baal, the god of his wife Jezebel. The consequence of Ahab's choices carried into his son's reign. 2 Kings 8, 25-29, Amplified Bible In the twelfth year of Joram, Jehoram, the son of Ahab, king of Israel, Ahaziah, the son of Jehoram, king of Judah, began to reign. Ahaziah was twenty-two years old when he became king, and he reigned one year in Jerusalem. His mother's name was Atalia, the granddaughter of Omri, king of Israel. He walked in the ways of the house of Ahab, and did evil in the sight of the Lord, as did the house of Ahab, for he was a son-in-law of the house of Ahab. Ahaziah went with Joram, the son of Ahab, to battle against Hazael, king of Aram, Syria, in Ramoth-Gilead and the Arameans wounded Joram. King Joram returned to Jezreel to be healed of the wounds which the Arameans had inflicted on him at Ramah when he fought against Hazael, king of Aram. And Ahaziah, the son of Jehoram, king of Judah, went down to see Joram, the son of Ahab, in Jezreel, because he was sick. Joram was later killed by Jehu, as God's justice against the idolatry of Ahab's family, and Jehu became king of Israel. 2. Kings 9, 14-15, Amplified Bible So Jehu, the son of Jehoshaphat, the son of Nimshi, conspired against Joram to dethrone and kill him. Now Joram, with all of Israel, was protecting Ramoth-Gilead against Hazael, king of Aram. Syria. But King Joram had returned to Jezreel to heal from the wounds which the Arameans had inflicted on him when he fought with Hazael, king of Aram. So Jehu said, If this is your intent, let no one survive and leave the city, Ramoth Gilead, to go and tell of the plan in Jezreel, the capital. As the Lord continued to bring judgment on Israel's religious infidelity and sin, he allowed Hazael to capture large swathes of Israel, overpowering the Israelites in those areas. 2 Kings 10, 32 So, in those days the Lord began to cut off portions of Israel. Hazael of Aram defeated them throughout the territory of Israel. As Hazael moved south, he eventually overran most of Ephraim, and turned to attack the kingdom of Judah and the city of Jerusalem. 2 Kings 12, 17-18, Amplified Bible Then Hazael, king of Aram, Syria, went up, fought against Gath in Philistia, and captured it. And Hazael resolved to go up to Jerusalem. So Jehoash, the king of Judah, took all the sacred things that Jehoshaphat and Jehoram and Ahaziah, his fathers, kings of Judah, had dedicated, and his own sacred things, and all the gold that was found in the treasuries of the house, temple of the Lord, 
and of the king's house, and sent them to Hazael king of Aram. And Hazael departed from Jerusalem. King Joash of Judah sent the temple treasures as a tribute to Hazael, so that Hazael withdrew from the attack. For several years, Hazael was permitted by the Lord to continue to oppress Israel, until ultimately King Jehoahaz of Israel turned back to the Lord and the Lord listened to his prayer. 2 Kings 30, 3 to 5. So the anger of the Lord was kindled and burned against Israel, and he handed them over time and again to Hazael, the king of Aram, Syria, and of Ben-Hadad, the son of Hazael. But Jehoahaz sought the favor of the Lord, and the Lord listened to him. For he saw the oppression of Israel, how the king of Aram oppressed them. Then the Lord gave Israel a savior, to rescue them and give them peace, so that they escaped from under the hand of the Arameans, and the sons, descendants of Israel, lived in their tents as before. As they turned in prayer, so the Lord was gracious to them, and had compassion, and showed concern for them because of his covenant with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. 2 Kings 30, 23 Amplified Bible. But the Lord was gracious to them, and had compassion on them, and turned toward them for the sake of his covenant with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And he was unwilling to destroy them, and did not cast them from his presence until now. Hazael died, and Jehoash, son of Jehoahaz, king of Israel, was able to fight Hazael's son, Ben-Hadad, and win back much of Israel's territory. 2 Kings 13, 3, Amplified Bible. So the anger of the Lord was kindled and burned against Israel, and he handed them over time and again to Hazael, the king of Aram, Syria, and of Ben-Hadad, the son of Hazael. 2 Kings 13, 24 to 25, Amplified Bible. Hazael, king of Aram, Syria, died. Ben Hadad, his son, became king in his place. Then Jehoash, Joash, the son of Jehoahaz, recovered from Ben Hadad, the son of Hazael, the cities which he had taken from Jehoahaz, his father, by war. Three times Joash defeated Ben Hadad and recovered the cities of Israel. Hazael was a great oppressor. 2 Kings 13, 22. Hazael the king of Aram oppressed Israel all the days of Jehoahaz. The prophet Amos also spoke against the family of Hazael for all his evil in attacking Israel, promising that Ben-Hadad's fortresses would be smashed. Amos 1, 4, Amplified Bible. So I will send a fire of war, conquest, and destruction upon the house of Hazael, and it shall devour the palaces and strongholds of Ben-Hadad, Hazael's son. Hazael was still responsible for his own actions in attacking God's people and seeking to subdue them even though the Lord allowed Hazael to win many battles because it was his will to draw Israel back to repentance and true worship. However, despite the fact that Hazael began his leadership by betraying the confidence of his boss, he never stopped to consider the repercussions of his example. He couldn't have reasonably anticipated anything different from his people, could he? Individuals who do this may expect a haunting ripple effect.